Hello, friends, and welcome back to Space Quest 3. I hope you're all doing fantastic, having a great week, having a great day, and you'll have a great time with me. Now, you probably watched my first video on Space Quest 3 and saw I was having some trouble. <laughs> a lot of deaths, uh, especially the non-intentional kind, but uh, let's see if I can do better. I believe in me, and I hope you believe in me, too. Put on seatbelt. You don't have it. Okay, well, search chair. Searching around the cushions, you find among variously colored wads of lint, seven buckazoids. All right. Look. Mm, if I spell it right. Look, buckazoids. You possess seven of these nifty monetary units known as buckazoids. All right. Got seven of those mamma jammas. And, well, I guess we should go somewhere in our new spaceship. So, look controls. And we now can use our navigation system. We are here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Give a quick scan. Planet Ortega. Well, that's a volcanic planet. Ah, uh, <laughs> sounds a little too hot for me. So let's see where else we can go. How about Planet Fleabot? Hmm, light atmosphere, one known element. Sounds like a place to check out. Let's go ahead and set our course. <clears throat> Stand by, calculating, course locked. Red D2 roll, we just need to do light speed. I think we'll need some light speed, not cruise. I mean, space is a big place. Light speed. Whew. <laughs> There's a harsh staccato synth right there. Who is this? It's the Romulans. Oh, wait, no. It's a robot. Identity confirmed. Roger Wilco. Case number. <laughs> Wilco wanted for uh, vending machine fraud. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Judgment. Terminate. Oh. Yes, if you watched my Space Quest 2 playthrough, you probably know what's happening. That is trippy. We are going through a tie-dye LSD version of space. A flashing message. All right. What do we get? What do we got? Orbiting planet Fleet Hut. Oh, okay. I guess we can go ahead and land then. Ah. Oh, love it. I love sci-fi. I've seen ships and planets and space. With a mighty whomp, you set the aluminum mallard down on the surface of Fleeb Hut. Aluminum mallard. I know that's reference to something. Oh, like Millennium Falcon. Okay. <laughs> okay. It took me a while. It took me a while. I didn't get it at first, but I got it now. All right. Now, can I push that button? I keep trying to push that button. There we go. As you step out of your ship into the surface of Fleebhut, you are hit in the face by the harsh winds. It looks like a storm is brewing. Thankfully, with this light atmosphere, we can survive. Meanwhile, another spacecraft touches down. They were right behind us. This killer android. This, dare I say, Terminator. Man, they really built that robot to look as muscular as possible. <laughs> and now he's invisible. Well, that's terrifying. Part Terminator, part Predator. Well, he does seem a little slow. And I can see his step, so maybe that'll be good. But let's go ahead and save our game. The Terma Predator. Go ahead, save that, and take a look around. Your ship is resting on a sandy spot between several large rocks. It looks like your automated landing system has done a remarkable job. Hey, I mean, give me some credit. I helped out here. Okay, that's a giant snake. <laughs> that's a mighty big snake. Well, talk snake. You say howdy, but all you get is a hiss and return. How about we kiss Snake? I think that may be his intent. Ooh. Oh, thanks for the kiss there, buddy. Uh, what? <laughs> well, 
Sounds like I was delicious. Thanks for playing Space Quest 3. As usual, you've been a real hoot. You were turned into Snake Chow. Congratulations on your recent death. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to try something here. I just learned about this. Just learned about it. All right, Snake. I'm going to bridle Snake. You've been getting some mighty strange ideas from playing King's Quest 2, haven't you? You lose five points. Oh my gosh, they actually did that. They took me from 145 to 140. They took away points because I knew a King's Quest 2 reference. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, thank you to the players who discovered that. I just recently learned about it, and that's pretty funny. Uh, to learn more about that, check out the King's Quest 2 playthrough. And, oh, that storm back there. That lightning, that was cool. Did you guys see that? So cool. Well, let's go ahead and restore our game. I'm not sure if I'm going to get full points here. As you can tell, I don't really remember this game as well as I do others. But let's go for some max points. But that was a cute little uh, inside joke. And Sierra does love their inside jokes. There'll be a lot more of those for sure. Um, Take another look around, I suppose. Strange rock formations rise up from the sand dunes. What a desolate place this is, you think to yourself. Of course I think to myself, this place is desolate. Oh no, a venomous scorpozoid. Watch out. Look, you see several large sand dunes and a few worn rocks. Look, scorpazoid. <laughs> what a cute little scorpazoid. Perhaps you should pick it up and take it with you. Sounds like a good idea. Take scorpazoid. We'll have to get close enough first, okay? Take. <laughs> so I, I let him come to me. We'll have to get close enough first. Hey, I don't think I get any closer than this. Take Scorpazoid. All right. Scorpazoid Stinger hits its mark, sending electroplasmatic venom into your system. Death comes quickly. Well, that does sound pretty intense. At least you gave me a cool hairdo. All right. Let's bump up the speed just a bit. Just a bit. And let's see where we can go. I believe I have to go up. Oh my gosh. Look, you are startled by the sight of a giant beast just beyond the sand dune to the north. Look, beast. Your fear turns to curiosity as you realize it is not a real beast, but a mechanical creation. Although it still looks dangerous, you can't decide whether to blast off this rock or inspect further the wonders of Flea Putt. I like that. I like that. It kind of scare you. Looks like a monster. But it's mechanical, so let's go check it out. Oh, it's an attraction. Of course it is. Y'all come back now, you hear? Aliens come. Oh, come on, dude. Come on. They look cool to me. Probably a friendly family. Let's go a little slower. Got some jaunty music here. Aha! A Taurus trap. This giant metal facsimile of a space beast is nothing more than a cheap marketing ploy designed to suck in any moron dumb enough to fall for such trickery. You suddenly feel like a dumb moron. You know what? I always like those things. Go to a car lot and they got a giant inflatable gorilla or something. It can be fun. It can be. Look, sign. Like a cool oasis in the desert, the friendly sign beckons you to enter the world of wonders, tourists haven. Tourist, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> into the world of wonders, tourist haven. Look, case. You peer through the glass of the display case and find a cute and cuddly little creature. A small sign on the glass informs you that this is an Antarian slime devil. How cute! Take slime devil. It does not seem to be available. Take creature. Okay. <clears throat> Save our game. And let's go in. Howdy, stranger. The name's Blatz. Fester Blatz. Welcome to World of Wonders. Go ahead. Have a look at some of the trendiest items in the known universe. Make the most of your vacation, Buckazoid. Okay, take a look around. 
Cast off refuse of a dozen worlds cling to every available surface of the store. You're astonished at the diversity. You're even more astonished that someone would buy this stuff. Well, what do I want to look at? Look, glass. I, I guess so. Look, jar? The shelves are arranged with some fine examples of the natural wonders of this planet. Also, some worthless junk that can only be found in a fine tourist establishment such as this. Look, items. Another word, apparently items, is in the Andromedon Dictionary. How about a nice O-Rad on a stick? The kids will just love this. We're talking hours of fun for the whole family. Just look how cute this little guy is. Yeah, it's very cute. Here's a red hot item. The official Astro Chicken flight hat. It really turns some heads in this sporty little number. It's modeled after the hot new arcade game that's sweeping the galaxy. Going to any high temp planets? Yes, we are. We have a volcano planet. This nice pair of thermo weave underwear will keep your internal environment pleasant on even the sweatiest worlds. You just take your time, you hear? Don't feel pressure to buy anything. Okay, well, here's the problem. We don't have many buckzoids. In fact, we only have seven we just found in a chair. So, let's sell him our gem. Ooh! Seems like he likes it. My, my, that certainly is one fine hunk of uranium. Orium. Uh, orium. I'll take it off your hands for 350 bucks always. What do you say? Well, I played Space Quest 1. I know how to haggle. I know how to haggle. I'm gonna say no. I'll take it off your hands for 400 bucks always. What do you say? Sounds good. Always turn down the first offer. That's what Space Quest 1 taught me, but pfft, this is Space Quest 3. No. I'll take it off your hands for 425 bucks a What do you say? That sounds like a good deal. Okay, so we have 432 bucks a now. Let's buy some items. We'll buy the things he showed us. So buy ORAP. A wise choice. I'm sure you'll be very, very pleased. And we'll buy the hat. And we'll buy the, uh, um, just say underwear. <laughs> underwear. A wise choice. And now we'll leave. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, looks like that lightning is getting close. Better be careful out there. Oh, oh geez. He got me. <laughs> Maybe we'll go to normal right now so it doesn't look so spastic. So, this is Roger Wilco, the man I have been sent across the universe to track down and terminate. I am not impressed. You are too easy to find. You tend to leave a mess wherever you go. Hey, I'm a janitor. Come on, I clean up. Seems you forgot to pay for that Labonian terror beast mating call whistle. I'll see you with interest that comes to 400,000 buckazoids. I don't think you've got that kind of cash on you, hmm? No, I don't think so. The good people at the Gipazoid Novelty Co. are most displeased. Non-payment is a serious offense. But lucky for you, I'm in a good mood today. I will count to ten real slow, then I track you down. If you make it to your ship, I forget I see you. But if I catch you again, I dust you like bunt cake. That's right. We're going to be killed because we ordered a whistle, but we didn't pay for it in Space Quest 2. What an interesting turn of events. Let's go ahead and save our game. Why, oh why, did I not pay... For whistle. All right. As far as I know, there's two ways to get rid of this terma predator, and I'm gonna try the way I normally haven't done it, which may not get me full points, but eh, it'll be interesting. Whoop! I don't think I moved soon enough. He got me. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that is some some cranking. <laughs> okay. Well yeah, he, he got us good. Alright. Let's let's get out of here. Alright. Something over here. Um ba -ba -ba, read sign. C. Fleeb Hut from Mog's Head Entrance Fee. Sorry, temporarily closed for repair. Sounds dangerous. Just a place to go. 
and take a look. You are inside one of Mog's legs. There is an elevator shaft complete with elevator. Ooh, leading up into the interior. Push up. I just assume there's an up button. All right, inside the robot. Yeah, I've never been inside here before. Take a look around. You are within the cavernous interior of Mog's belly. An elevator shaft leads down, and stairs run between the first and second level platforms. The heavy equipment necessary to automate Mog can be seen on the upper level. All right. Head upstairs, take a look at this machinery here. When the elevator is going down, somebody might be using it. Somebody called it. Look, machinery. Try another word. Did I spell that right? Did I? Have to make sure sometimes. Look. Equipment. The large electric motor providing power for Mog's automation hums noisily away on the second level platform. Did it say something different? Da da da. Heavy equipment. Look, hook. There are two rope pulleys near the motor and gears. Apparently, they are used for maintenance of the equipment. Looking up, you notice that they are mounted on tracks running the length of the second floor platform. I see you, Wilco. Oh my gosh, he's coming for me. So I actually don't know <laughs> completely how to do this, but I kind of have the gist of it, so I hope it works out. Hero time one. Push, push hook. Okay, yeah, so I think that's what we gotta do here. Oh, never mind. Here he comes. It all comes down to timing. Push hook. Reaching up, you give the rope pulley a mighty shove. You missed. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he got me. <laughs> All right. Well, let's try again. <laughs> okay, so this time, um, uh, maybe it's just the timing. Maybe when he's right next to the gears. Push hook. Mighty shove. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. And of course, it'd be silly if I were to die the same way. Oh, <laughs> no! Well, that was just like the grinders, I suppose. Okay, restore. Okay, this time I'll do it the way I normally do it, but that was fun. It was fun to do something a little different. I think we might get more points this way. Only because we have to use... Another item. Another item that we just got. Because if we do it the gear way, we never have to use it, I would imagine. Now I just have to find where I have to go. I don't really No. Alright, let's save our game. Hero time two. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Well, we'll we'll turn the speed down to normal. And we'll save the game. Here are time to take a look around. You see several large rocks here. One rock has a large overhang and almost appears to be a cave. Under the overhang, you see several large pulsating pods. Look pods. For a brief moment, you could swear they were just a bunch of dancing raisins, but a closer look indicates otherwise. The leech-like creatures appear to have connected themselves to this overhang with a gelatinous adhesive secretion. Yuck. So, I wonder what these guys would do if I came to say hello. All right, that is exactly what they do, and uh, not a good thing for Roger. At least if I do it that way. Turn into pod chow. First snake chow, now pod chow. Okay, as you can see in the left there, he's he's coming. He's coming for us. There we go. See, the pods would eat me, but they would also eat him. 
Hero time three. Let's see. Look, robot. The Terminator is now a pile of junk lying on the sand under the pustules. Looking closely, you notice that the Terminator's invisibility belt has survived relatively intact. Well, that's something we definitely want, but we can't go under these guys anymore. So instead, we'll use our ORAT on a stick. There we go. We got it. We got it. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's check out our inventory. O-Rat, underwear, Astro Chicken at, Bakazoi's invisibility belt. Take a look at them. Look, O-Rat. The O-Rat on a stick. You can open its mouth and close his mouth. Hours of fun for all. <laughs> look, underwear. Thermo weave shorts. They keep you cool and they're oh so stylish. Look, hat. Wow, your official Astro Chicken flight hat. Man, the babes will really dig you in this. Look, belt. Look out, it's low on power. Okay, we survived the Terma Predator. Wanted to kill us because we didn't pay for a simple, uh, whistle. Scorpion's back, now he's gone. Good old leave the screen, re-enter the screen magic. We are good. Roger Wilco has saved the universe two times already. He knows how to deal with a scorpion. All right. Save our game again, because we are going to go off this planet. Sit chair. Look controls. And... Start this bad mamma jamma up and take off. Look controls one more time. Use our navigation system. And do a quick scan here. Resume scan. And hey, we got a new place here. Monolith Burger Fast Food Dive. A finite number served. All right, set the course. Let's go there. Light speed, light speed, that's what we want. So this is a funny thing about the game. I think a lot of people have talked about this, but so far, there's not much of a story. I was in stasis. I was picked up. And hey, look at that. There's the Enterprise. <laughs> a lot of references in this game. Yeah, I was in stasis. I was picked up, so I just needed to get out of there. Just happened to go to Fleeb Hut, where I was pursued by a Terma Predator. With the docking maneuver completed, the engine shut down. Welcome to Monolith Burger. So I escaped from the Terma Predator, and now I'm just going to a burger joint. <laughs> so yeah, Roger's just kind of wandering around so far. So this is where the story will kick in, but this is completely optional. So really, you can just play the whole game just kind of meandering around. The decor, like the food, is the same in monolith burgers all over the universe. Generic counter clerks are eagerly awaiting to help you. Diverse life forms are crowded around the counter and sitting in booths consuming what can only loosely be termed food. Look, money. How much money do I have? Uh, you possess 357. All right, I think that's enough for a, for a burger. Welcome to Monolith Burger. I like the look of this guy. He's so cartoony. May I take your order? Look, alien. The clerk looks like he'd rather be doing anything besides waiting on you. <laughs> well, at least he's employee of the week. That's good. Um, talk alien. I don't have all day, sir, he says in a mock polite tone of voice. Okay. Order food. Oh, I got a menu here. Mini monolith, monolith with... Holly cheese, filet o o rat. <laughs> Love all the o rat references. Jumbo monolith, big belcher combo. Okay, space butts, nice. Extra grease and sloppy slurper. Monolith fun meal. Oh, we do like to have fun, so we'll order number seven. Choose number to order seven. 
Thank you. And uh, I believe that'll be it. Would you like something to drink with that? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> sure. Would you like some space buzz with that? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, his eyes. <laughs> Would you like a black fruit pie with that? Absolutely. Special today, a free drink with every purchase. Okay. Total is seven buckazoids. Pay alien. Have a nice day. You have a nice day as well. Thank you. Good thing you didn't say enjoy your meal because I would have said you too and then it would have been awkward. You gingerly pick up the greasy bag. You can hardly wait to have a seat and dig in. Whoa, this guy, he was having a fun time. All right, eat food. Oh man, Roger's slurping it down. You gotta take your time, Roger. Enjoy your food. It's a pleasure. It's a delight. That's how I treat my food. And that's it's also probably why I had weight problems most of my life. <laughs> Love food a little too much sometimes. Ow. Hey, what's this in my burger? Oh, it must be my fun meal prize. Hey, hey, it's a swell decoder ring. A decoder ring? Oh, man, it's awesome. Mmm, that was mighty tasty. Well, maybe mildly tasty. Well, Maybe not tasty at all. In fact, it reminded you of the slick skin of a valerian mucus worm. Well, clean trash. Pardon me. Um, pick up trash. Nah, let Mr. Employee of the Week clean it up. <laughs> okay, game, if that's the lesson you want to teach me, sure. Let's save our game. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm digging it. <laughs> so it's not copyright. All right. Look, arcade. Try another word. Apparently, arcade isn't in the Andromeda Dictionary. Well, maybe we can head over here. Got my airlock, geek. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're not wanted there. Look, look, game. Ooh, Astro Chicken. Good thing I got my hat. Astro Chicken must land on the Astro Chicken landing pad. He's depending on you to bring him to safety. All right, all right, okay. I think I got all this. But, heck, let me see. Put on hat. Forget it. Think of something else. Oh, I wanted to play the game with my hat on. Okay, well, let's try it. This is another kind of arcade section, and... I don't remember too well how it works. I know it's a little hard to control, but uh, kind of like Space Quest 1 when you're on the, the sand surfer. A little arcadey. Uh, oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> that chicken exploded. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How do I... Oh my gosh, this is definitely much more <laughs> harder to control than I thought it would be. Um, so there is there is mercy on this game. Well, no, no, we'll just play it ahead. If I don't get full points, that's fine. Um, put it in money. Okay, let's try... <laughs> let's try again. <laughs> I am the worst at this game. I am so bad. Oh, uh, I got one. I need to get 10, I believe. But if you can play the game at least uh, 10 times, uh, it will just take mercy on you. Okay. Insert money. You know, I never uh, learned how to do the, the, the repeat command. So if you guys actually... Friends, if you actually know, let, let me know in the comments. That should be something I should know, playing as many Sierra games as I do, but, uh, just something I never, never learned. All right, I gotta, all right, all right, all right. Oh, 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 oh hey, look at that. Bounce towards success. Okay, 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 I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Nope. Nope. Oh, jeez. 
<laughs> Coming down so hard fast. Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry for being quiet there, but that uh that required a lot of concentration. Oh my gosh. Okay, hey, we did it. Uh so I guess that was ten. I landed ten astro chickens. So we have here a message, but it's coded. Thankfully, we just got a decoder ring. So, use ring. And I guess for fun at home, if you want to decode this message, you can. But uh, I know everybody's time is valuable. So, I'll go ahead and just let everybody know what the message is. So, if you decode this letter for letter, you get help us. We are being held captive by Scumsoft. On the small moon of Pestulon, an impenetrable force field surrounds the moon. It must first be deactivated. Its origin is unknown to us. Scumsoft security is armed with jello pistols. We're counting on you, whoever you are. Signed, Two Guys in Trouble. So, this is the main story of the game. This is your main drive. This is your main goal. And you don't have to play this game. You don't have to play Astro Chicken. You don't have to find the message. You don't have to decode this message. But if you don't, uh, things just kind of happen. So it's kind of nice to know. And now we know. We all know. So let's go ahead. Save our game. Get that mouse out of there. Now we know the story. I guess. <laughs> we'll go ahead, stop it there. I somehow, against all odds, was able to beat Astro Chicken. So, I mean, I know I'm feeling good. I hope you guys are feeling good watching me and playing the game with me. And again, let me know how things are going. Hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully you guys are absolutely rocking life. And hopefully you can just take time out of your busy schedules. Or I appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedules and, and hanging out with me. I really do. It's a, it's a nice time, really. And I hope to see you all in the next video. So please take care.